Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter, and the title of my message is Everyone Who Believes, and we're looking at Acts chapter 10, verses 48 through 48, 44 through 48 for the scripture. Again, that's Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They then invited them to stay for several days. May God bless the reading of his holy word. In Acts 10, in the scriptures, it tells us a story about Peter and Cornelius. At uh, Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius. He was an officer in the uh, Italian group of Roman army. Cornelius was a religious man. He and all the other people who lived at his house, they worshipped the true God. He gave much of his money to the poor, and he prayed to God often. One afternoon, about three o'clock, Cornelius, he saw a vision. In the vision, an angel of God came to him and said, Cornelius! Cornelius stared at the angel. He became afraid and he said, What do you want, Lord? The angel said, God has heard your prayers. He has seen what you give to the poor. And God remembers you. The angel told Cornelius to send some men now to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon. In this scripture, Simon is also called Peter. The scripture refers to two men that are named Simon in the scripture I'm covering this morning. I'm going to use the name Peter for Simon Peter. Okay? And the other Simon's going to remain Simon. Peter is staying with a man whose name is Simon. He has a house beside the sea, but he's not a fisherman. He's a leather worker. After the angel spoke to Cornelius, the angel left. Cornelius, he called two of his servants and a soldier. <clears throat> the soldier was a religious man who worked for Cornelius. Cornelius explained everything to the servants and to the soldier. Then Cornelius sent the three of them to Joppa. Around noon the next day, as the three men came from Joppa, Peter was going up to the roof to pray. Peter was hungry and he wanted to eat. But while the food was being prepared, Peter had a vision. He's up on the roof, he's having a vision. Peter saw heaven open and something coming down. I would say in some Disney productions, you might see birds on the four corners of this sheet. But there was nothing on the corners of this sheet or the scripture would have said that. The sheet comes down from heaven. And it's as if something's holding it by the four corners. It looked like a big sheet being lowered to earth by its four corners. And in the sheet, Peter saw all kinds of animals, reptiles, and birds inside the sheep. Then Peter heard a voice say to him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Well, Peter knew this voice was the Lord speaking to him. And Peter says, No, Lord, I have never eaten food that is unholy or unclean. The voice said to Peter, God has made these things clean. Don't call them unholy. The scripture tells us that this happened three times. Then the sheep was taken back up into heaven. While Peter was wondering what this vision meant, the men Cornelius sent had found Simon's house. 
The three men were standing outside the gate. While at the gate, they asked, is Peter, Simon Peter staying here? Well, while Peter was still thinking about the vision he had just witnessed, the Spirit said to Peter, listen, three men are looking for you. Get up and go downstairs. Go with them and don't ask questions. I have sent them to you. So Peter we went down to the men. And the Peter said, I am the man you're looking for. <laughs> what Peter did, first thing he did was says, why did you come here? <laughs> but he was curious. Although he said not to ask questions, I'm assuming he was asked not to ask questions after the telling of the telling. It was okay to say what he said there. They said, a holy angel spoke to Cornelius. He is an army officer. He's a good man. He worships God. All the Jewish people respect him. The angel told Cornelius to ask you to his house so that he can hear what you have to say. Well, here we go. Then Peter asked the men to come in and spend the night. I don't talk that little question. It just probably said, would you come on in? The next day, Peter got ready and he went with them. The scripture tells us that some of the brothers from Joppa joined Peter. We don't know how many, but usually in biblical, it's always three. So you have witnesses. It's always the numbers of three. On the following day, they arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius, he was waiting for them. He was probably anxious because he knew Peter would be coming sometime soon. Or he was hoping he would. Cornelius had called together his relatives and his close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius, he met Peter. And Cornelius, he fell at Peter's feet and he worshipped him. But Peter helped Cornelius up, saying, stand up. I too am only a man. Peter continued talking with Cornelius as they went inside. Once inside, Peter saw many people gathered together. Peter said to them, you all understand that it is against our Jewish law for a Jew to be associated with or visit anyone who is not a Jew. You want that made clear. But he says, but God has shown me that I should not call any person unholy or unclean. That's what the sheep meant. That is why I did not argue when I was asked to come here. How would that now? How would you please tell me why you sent for me? Please tell me why I'm here. Well, Cornelius, he spoke up and he said, four days ago, I was praying in my house. It was three o'clock in the afternoon. And it's probably stuck pretty strong in his head because an angel appeared. Suddenly there was a man standing there before me wearing shining clothes. But do you all remember that it's normal for angels to look like men when people saw them in person? That seems throughout scripture. Sometimes they look like an angel, sometimes they look like a man. And all of us in here know there's angels among us. <clears throat> Cornelius, he told Peter, this man said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer. God has seen what you give to the poor. The man also said, God remembers you. So send some men to Joppa and ask Simon Peter to come. Peter stayed in the house of a man named Simon, who is a leather worker. This house is beside the sea. Cornelius continued to tell Peter, so I sent for you immediately. He didn't wait around. He sent for him immediately. It was very good of you to come. Now we are all here before God to hear everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Well, Peter's response to Cornelius was, I really understand now that to God, every person is the same. God accepts anyone who worships him and does what is right. It's not important what country a person comes from. You know that God has sent his message to the people of Israel. God's message is good news. 
God's message is that peace has come through Jesus Christ. God's message tells us that Jesus is the Lord of all people. You know what has happened all over Judea. It began in Galilee after John the baptizer preached to the people about baptism. You know about Jesus from Nazareth. God made Jesus Christ by giving him the Holy Spirit and power. You know how Jesus went everywhere doing good. Jesus healed those who were ruled by the devil. For God was with Jesus. We saw all the things that Jesus did in Judea and Jerusalem. But they killed Jesus Christ by nailing him to the cross. Yet on the third day, God he raised Jesus to life and caused him to be seen. But Jesus Christ was not seen by all the people. Only the witnesses that God had already chosen saw Jesus. We are those witnesses. We ate and we drank with Jesus after he was raised from the dead. Jesus told us to preach to the people and to tell them that he is the one whom God chose to be the judge of the living and the dead. Everyone who believes in him will be forgiven. God has said that we will forgive all who sin through their belief in Jesus Christ. All the prophets say this is true. While Peter was still speaking to them, the Holy Spirit it came down on those who were listening. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been given even to the non-Jewish people. When these Jewish believers heard the non-Jewish people speaking in different languages and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized from the water? They, they had received the Holy Spirit just as we did. So Peter he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then he asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. I'm going to stop right here and then we'll continue, but we've seen the chaos with the, with the protesters and the death chants and stuff that they've been doing. Don't forget about the Christians who stood up during this. This Christian voice that raised the flag. They put a camera on them too. So God says, I'm here. Found a penny a couple of times. Usually when you look down and it says, in God we trust, I feel like that's just little reminders that God is here. No matter what, God is here. He's always in control. But in my closing, I want to share the scripture from the book of John, chapter 15, beginning at verse 9 with you. Beginning at verse 9, Jesus says, I loved you as the Father loved me. Now remain in my love. I have obeyed my Father's commands, and I remain in his love. In the same way, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. I have told you these things so that you can have the same joy that I have. I want your joy to be the fullest joy. And he says, this is my command. Love each other as I have loved you. The greatest love a person can show is to die for his friends. Jesus said, you are my friends. If you do what I command you, I don't call you servants now. A servant does not know what the master is doing. But now I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my father. You did not choose me. I chose you. And I give you this work to go and produce fruit. I want you to produce fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you anything you ask for in my name. By this, my command, love each other. If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, if you belong to the world, then it would love
love you as it loves its own. But I have chosen you out of the world, so you don't belong to it. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If people did wrong to me, they will do wrong to you also. And if you obey my teachings, they will obey yours too. They will do all this to you because of me. They don't know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me also hates my father. I did works among them that no one else has ever done. If I had not done those works, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen what I did, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this happened so that this written in their law would be true. They hated me for no reason. I will send you the helper from the father. He is the spirit of truth who comes from the father. When he comes, he will tell about me. And you also must tell people about me because you have been with me from the beginning. Jesus is saying, get out there and witness. Tell people about it. Love others. Share the gospel. Show your witness. You don't want people to be left behind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your holy word. Please forgive us when we fall short in your eyes. Gives us the wisdom and the courage to step out and be witnesses of what Jesus Christ has done for us in our life. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.